The diagram shows two resistors in parallel. Calculate the current through the resistors and the cell. Internal resistance is negligible. I'm going to do this by looking at the individual resistors firstly. So if there's six volts across the cell, then it has to be six volts across this and six volts across this because they're all in parallel with each other. Now that I know two things about each of the uh, resistors, I can work out the third thing. In this case, I can work out the current by doing V over R. So the first one is going to be 6 volts over 100. So the current of the first branch is going to be 0 0.06 amps. And if I do the same thing for the next one, I'm doing 6 over 200. And that gives me 0 0.03 amps. So these are the currents that are flowing in these two branches. Okay, so it's 0 0.06 amps to the other one and 0 0.03 amps to the other one. And these are going to, because at this junction the current is going to join back together, it's going to be 0 0.09 amps flowing through this and through this cell. And similarly, similarly here, 0 0.09 amps through this. Okay, there's another way I can work out the total current through the cell in this case. And that's not by, uh, not by applying ohms law to the individual resistors, but to the circuit as a whole. So I'm going to work out the resistance of this combination. So because that's in parallel, so 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200, and then 1 over that whole thing to get the total resistance. And that gives me 66.7 ohms. Now uh, that's, that's the total resistance. The total voltage across this, in fact, is across all components is 6 volts. So the current, the total current will equal the total voltage over the total resistance, so 6 over 66.7, and you get the same answer as before, 0 0.09 amps flowing through um, the cell itself. Okay, so this is the same circuit as before, but except I've added this extra resistor, the 500 ohm resistor, in parallel with the circuit here. So the voltage across this, this is still 6 volts and 6 volts, and in, across this is also 6 volts. So because the current and uh, so the voltage and the uh, resistance of these two haven't changed, the current through that is the same, still 0 0.6 amps. The current through this is also still the same, 0 0.03 amps. Okay, but so we need to work out the current through this branch now. So if I apply Ohm's law, 6 over 500, that will give me the current. That gives me 0 0.012 amps. Okay, that's what's flowing down this branch. And it's going to join up with the 0 0.03 amps here and then join up with the 0 0.06 amps here to give us now a total of 0 0.102 amps compared to the 0 .0, 0 0 0.09 that was flowing through it last time. So the current has increased and this is what we expect. Because we've added extra branch for the current to flow through, we've got more current flowing around the circuit. So what's effectively happened is the total resistance of the circuit has decreased and there's more current flowing through the circuit for the same voltage. Okay, the diagram shows a resistor and a filament bulb in parallel with a cell of negligible internal resistance. The voltmeter reads 8 volts, the ammeter reads 1.5 amps. Okay, you need to calculate the current through each resistor and the resistance of the bulb. Okay, because this is 8 volts, we know this has to be 8 volts, this has to be 8 volts, this has to be 8 volts because they're all in parallel with each other. Okay, um, right, so what can we do? So now that we, I can see straight away that we know for this one, two things for this one. So we can work out the current through this one as well. So we just apply Ohm's law to this individual resistor here. So eight divided by 20. Okay, that gives me 0 0.4 amps. Okay, so now this one, I don't know the resistance of this one. And I don't know the current yet, but I can work out the current because I know if there's 1.5 amps going through this and only 0 0.4 amps is flowing down this route, that must mean the remainder is going down this route. So that means that 1.1 amps is going down this route here. Now I know none of, none of it is going to go through the voltmeter, so the current going through this one is 1.1 amps. So now I can apply Ohm's law to this one as well to figure out its resistance. So Ohm's law for this one, 8 volts divided by the current will give me the resistance, 1.1. That gives me a resistance of 7.3 ohms. Okay, so we've got a similar circuit here, except there's a variable resistor at the bottom here. 
The question is asking, state what, the, what effect increasing the resistance of the variable resistor has on the current and PD throughout the circuit. Okay, explain your answer as well. So firstly, I know because this is a parallel circuit, the voltage across everything here will be constant, will be the same. Okay, that's the first point I'll make. Secondly, I know that this one, the, for the fixed resistor, the resistance isn't going to change and the voltage isn't going to change. So whatever current it has is going to go through it is just going to remain constant. So the current through the fixed resistor will remain constant. However, if the resistance of this goes up, the voltage is the same. That means the current through this branch will go down. So the current through the variable resistor will decrease. Now, if the current through the variable resistor decreases and the current through the fixed resistor is still the same, the current coming out here is going to decrease all. So the total current is going to decrease because the current through one of the branch has decreased. Okay, so the current through the cell decreases. But another way of thinking about this is, okay, if we haven't added extra root to anything, what we've done is we've increased the resistance of one of the resistors. It means that this combination as a whole will have a higher total resistance. So if there's a higher total resistance for the same voltage, you're going to get lower total current uh, in the circuit, which is the other possible way of explaining it.